with no anesthetics. And we're proud of companies for raising their profile and their profits. This is where I think some hard things have gone this week. We've got to stop legitimizing greed in business. We've got to have a, a culprit code of governments with teeth. This should be against the law. There should be many things that business do that should be stopped. Too many criminal activities are going on with the big multi-corporate businesses that we just put a blind eye to. We turned our shops to action stations. This is a shop in America. The back of the back of the room uh, through graphics and illustration, fax machines, telephones, all our customers would come in and make a point. This isn't cause-related marketing. This has nothing to do with marketing a product. This is marketing the human spirit. This is giving people access to information, what governments should do, what the media should be doing. This is what makes it the people want to stay with us. And then we turned another truck. This, is the, this was just before Ken Sarah we were done. And so they become political billboards as well. Nowhere. This is probably the most dangerous part because I don't recommend any company ever, ever follows this course. This is what separates us from everybody when we start talking about um, challenging another company. You know, it's very easy to hug a bunny rabbit. It's easy to do good work with little babies and you know, do stuff, good stuff. And I'm not demeaning that. But it's almost impossible to challenge another company in business on its moral behavior. You challenge it on its market share, you challenge it on its marketing practices, but it's very, very, very rare that you challenge somebody or another company as we challenge Shell or a union carbine, as we challenge, you know, um, Exxon Mobil. You know, and we don't have friends in this because most companies are petrified of doing this. But what we do find is that what we're doing is relating ourselves and in day and, and and sort of getting a better relationship with the non-government organizations. And I believe any company worth its salt now should have on its board or an advisor to its board or executive committee, members of the non-government organization movement. I remember this has been the most exciting movement that I've experienced uh, in the last 20 years. Community trade for me is one of the most, it's a light at the end of the tunnel against poverty and also taking the money that you make and, and supporting any grassroots group that's doing good jobs as we do with our Human Rights Award, which is given every two years. We go into a these toxic waste dump. This is in the Philippines, another one in Managua, in Nicaragua. These are kids, 700 kids are on this dump, this toxic waste dump, working, finding anything they can sell. And we look for groups that are educating them and funding them. Just always going down to the grassroots. Because leadership no longer is in the political system, rarely is it in the business now. You see the grassroots the leadership, the true spiritual leadership, I believe, is in the, in the grassroots. And I believe, too, that the search of child labor, there is nowhere, nowhere that the public is more outraged on this issue of child labor. People know that kids have been sort of um, bought and sold as slaves. They have, the public display has had enormous outrage when they see the pictures like I'm showing you. We know that children are used in sweatshop labor. We know they're bought and sold. They are sometimes tortured and confined in the workplace. And they do never, ever complain. They're sold in the sexual, the sexual cargo in the sex industry, and especially the dark side of the tourist industry. And I believe now that what we've got to do is measure our country's wealth by how it treats its children. And I, you know, there's always arguments for children working. And then there's no argument I have against that. But I get so tired when I say it's the culture to do this. You know, how is it when we, if we put, if I put my grandchildren in the conditions that this child is working on, if I take my five year old grandchild, and this is Burma, this is a child of London flavor, whether it's farm labor or domestic labor, we would be outraged. We're I'd be sent to prison. But you know, we so accept this in the West, you know, for our lifestyle. We kind of turn a blind eye. This should be bad. This isn't about creating a job, this is about greed of the system. That where our economic values have overridden every other human value, joy, compassion, kindness, care. 
It's gone. We measure everything by its economic worth, how much you worth, economic values, even our language is now has economic overtones to it. Corporate social responsibility has an enormous role to play in this. What we've got to do, I believe, is start finding examples, real examples, and looking for any organization, any business that has a proximate solution, proximate solution to these problems. Because we cannot be people are getting so tired of the bad things in business. So anybody out there that is doing something with media should praise from the rooftop. And this is where the media should come in and don't. Financial journalists who mostly can't add up and mostly can't write are not interested in this revolution in thinking. And yet the media should be behind us with our ways of trying to reshape businesses as part of the human spirit rather than anything else. And the dilemma really is the social responsibilities of fascism within the financial world. You know, one of the big dilemmas and one of the big mistakes I make is going on to the stock market. You know, it doesn't give any time for reflection on the stock market. It doesn't give you any time for experimentation. It doesn't, it doesn't allow you to say, I'm not going to open up any more shops this year, I just want to have more fun with my employees. Tell them that. It, it, it's not, it's, it's just too driven by one measurement, which is profit and loss. And in a business, it is more than this. Like the business of life is not just breathing, it's more than that. If you just concentrated on your breathing, you would be a deeply dull person. You just concentrate on maximizing your profit, you would not only be a deeply dull corporation, but you could end up being criminal in your activities because maximizing profit becomes your modus operandi. So until we can change that, until we have some laws that change the demands of the financial services, there, there should be a law, I believe, that says you want to go onto these, these financial markets, you want to go onto the stock market, you want to go onto Wall Street, then you have to have certain considerations. You have to be audited, which you are financially, but you should be audited for your environmental um, management, you should be audited for your human rights management, for your social justice. You should be banned from going on the stock market if you start doing things in a, in a mischievous and disingenuous way. You should just plainly be banned. We should ban products coming into our country if they have even the smell of sweatshop labor or child slavery attached to it. We should be so outraged at this that we should be a movement as strong as the civil rights movement in America. Trade justice, workers' justice should be our rallying cry. But we have, to, we have to start helping these CEOs that only measure their work by the success of the share price. And social responsibility doesn't seem to be able to stand up against the demands of the markets. Because every time the stock market what the stock market rewards is the sort of toughness, downsizing. Oh, Sears is doing a great job in just 5,000, people. That's a good business move. They, you know, they're, they're, they're rewarded for cost cutting. They don't reward ethical behavior. I've never got one tax break for being good to my employees. And neither of them want to be here who's working in this. Or for any imaginative social responsibility. Quite the reverse, is more often ridiculed in major investment magazines like Forbes and Fortune. So schizophrenia remains. Corporate boardrooms will sort of take on moral decisions if they do not attempt to touch the central task of the company. I believe ethics are irrelevant when they do. And we have to go further than that. I think corporate social responsibility is simply not going to develop into anything worthwhile unless there is the reform of this financial system. So the bold one ethical experiment do not actually make things worse for the companies that are trying it out, as more often they do. I believe most companies that are trying to do ethical things, social responsibility, are mostly challenged by the media and not applauded by the media. So what I believe we've got to do more than anything is what we, we've got to prepare to look for any, any company that's doing good things and we have to shout out the human job. The universities like this should be consistently bringing in organizations which have real, real innovation in them, not just technical innovation, but innovation of the human spirit, redefining the language of business because this is going to be the future. And I believe that we have to show that business can show more developed emotions of fear and greed. And that the thousands of people working in marketing or in creative services, maybe, just maybe, they can take their God-given skills 
and to try to find some solutions and creative solutions to these social problems. Thank you.
I, I'm a grassroots person. Um, cutting down hierarchy was the most important thing. And I think that one of the most important things when a company gets bigger is what you lose is intimacy. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and hierarchy rises. Rules and regulations are starting to put in place and creativity is snuffed out. So anything you can do to destroy hierarchy, I think, would be worthwhile. Number thing is, is, is sort of the aesthetics of the workplace. Number two, you live your talk. Um, we used education as a really strong means. We used to do a lot of uh, uh, lectures at lunchtime, bringing in politicians, bringing in uh, theologians, bringing in activists, talking to our staff. Um, about the work they do. So it became a sort of a, an education retreat. We even had dumb things like drum pledge, or drum, with drumming lessons. And I can't tell you, that was a mistake I really made. Drumming lessons at lunchtime with work. But we used to bring musicians to come in to our company and play violin to do it around the offices. And that was, that was a sense that everything created is possible. Number two, you've got to know start to really control and write the mission of the company, not get a PR agency to say this is what we're about. We changed from the day one when the body shop when we went to this public stock market, we dedicated our legally dedicated our company to the pursuit of social and environmental change and human rights advocacy. This is the legal document of the purpose of being in the body shop. 70% of our shareholders will have to get together to, to vote it out if they so want to. So that's legally embedded in our, in our rules and regulations in our company. What do you think when some people claim that social responsibility is some kind of social marketing? I think they're cynical and I think the problem with cynics is that they seem to have in this air that they have insight. And it's actually lack of moral courage. I think any, any, any idea that any, any, even, even if it's just talk in this movement, and at least language creates the thinking behind the action. You know, and I've learned that in some terms of revolution in thinking could take two decades, but at least what we've got is the language for uh, behavior and action. We don't have the actions yet, and it is used a lot as greenwashing. But people are so smart, you just get onto the internet and you see these thousands of billions of dollars of advertising and the old days Shell did to talk. It's like it was written by, by the angels of such a perfect company. You get onto their website and you find the reality. So people can't, companies can't hide behind their, their advertising speak now. If you took it into the dilemma, Coca-Cola was going through. You know, this happy, you know, you know, you know Coca-Cola and we're all singing the song and running the world and, you know, everything was happy and perfect. Amazing social reputation management they're going through in countries like India, in the taking of water. Then everywhere you go, there's organizations coming up uh, challenging the role of Coca-Cola, especially in the Far East and in India. I mean, that's, that's I believe, how, how truth is found out. How do you think the education system should change? Um, drastically. I think we should stop educating children to perform on a business analysis. We're, we're auditing, we're checking children too early on in life. We're giving business standards for education. We're filling them with facts. We're not teaching them compassion. We're not teaching them wonderment. We're not teaching them social justice. We're not teaching them, we're not teaching them anything about the ability to be a passive employee. We're not teaching them to stand out, challenge the system their minds open, we don't do debate, we're timid. Timidity is the modus operandi now in most schools. So I think there should be, there must be a different way of doing doing education, like the, like the, um, certainly the, the more, like the Pontessori schools or some of the others, the human scale education. Everybody, people are now leaving the education system in droves in England because it's all assessment, assessment. It's even five-year-old children are being assessed. Instead of being looked at to see if they're gregarious and social, they're being assessed. Every, even teachers are getting tired of the assessment process. Police force are getting tired of being assessed. All of these are business standards that are going on in the schools. And now business is being taken, education is being corralled, being taken over by schools. You just buy, buy, buy businesses. 
taken over by the schools have been taken over by business to go to America. All the research projects, the big research projects are coming from multinational corporations. And so knowledge is no longer free. Knowledge goes right back, the research paid to the university goes right back to the benefit of the company. And that is that is very, very scary. How can we apply corporate social responsibility to the very cost-oriented industry, such as commodity products? I've no idea. I just think these things are not made in nature. I think um, they're not deemed by God or God, they're made by men and women so they can be changed. I think maybe the real cost of something, the environmental cost and the social cost should be included in almost everything. The real cost of a business never measures the water. This is our life-affirming system. And yet it's being stolen under our eyes by this mania, this absolute obsession with privatization. This is the most, the worst thing that is happening, certainly has happened in my country. My country. They privatized the railway and it's a disaster. They privatized, they're privatizing everything. They try, try, privatize the waterways and it's a disaster. So if you've got any, 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 any politicians obsessed with privatization, it's challenging. It just doesn't work. It just means money is just challenging. How do you measure your success and how do you measure the success of the body shop? Well, I think success changes. In the early days I measured it by how many people I employed or I survived. My husband said before I left, uh, he left the South America, he said, you have to take 300 pounds a week, $500, and then you'll be okay. That's my entire financial understanding. And so I measured by survival, I measured by how